Thank you, Senator. Senator Donnelly, you have five minutes. Gurumwaigat, Carlach, uh, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Um, Gurumwaigat, uh, Iris and Carl Aharogs to my brother, Kyle May. I'm sorry I missed your contribution uh, in the Chamber, uh, Minister, but I have uh, read through it uh, subsequently. Um, Minister, I'm going to try, uh, if I can, to avoid getting into the whole broader politics of Brexit uh, with you because we have debated this issue at length. Uh, some may even accuse us of debating it ad nauseum uh, over the last couple of weeks. It's something that I've raised consistently before um, the Brexit uh, vote. Um, and and I, I, I'm starting to get to the point now where I think we need to get beyond the, the long fingering and simply the, the benign, bland statements of, well, we don't know, we're preparing, we're talking. I'm not advocating any kind of haphazard or any kind of knee-jerk or reactive approach to this. But the negative implications of Brexit are happening now. They're happening today, they were happening yesterday, they were happening last week and last month, and they're much worse uh, ahead of us, uh, I feel. And of course, I'm not the only one uh, who feels like that. We've been talking about this, as I say, and, and, and it struck me today, Bob Dylan uh, was uh, awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature, and obviously one of his uh, famous uh, lyrics is, you don't need a weller man to know which way the wind's blowing. And the wind is blowing very much against our favour uh, in this regard, um, and it's blowing very coldly uh, and unfortunately very loudly from a Tory administration uh, in London who doesn't really give uh, two dams uh, about uh, the welfare of anywhere beyond the southeast of England, let alone the northeast uh, of Ireland. So, Minister, what I was hoping to do, if I could use this time uh, with yourself uh, on the floor of this House, um, would be not. Uh, to grandstand around the political uh, implications of Brexit, but to use the opportunity from the weekend's rallies um, along the border, which were very, very well attended, and I took great heart from the fact that they were very, very broadly attended. There was people there from every uh, community. There was people there from uh, a broad range of political parties. There was people there fr who spoke uh, from the platform at the rally I was at uh, on the Louth Armagh border. People from the trade union sector, people from the community and voluntary sector, the agricultural sector, the trade union movement, the chambers of commerce, uh, north and south. So there's a couple of tweets that went up uh, during the course of that rally. And I want to just try and, uh, if I can, Cahirlach, just to refer to a few of them. £4.4 .4 billion of business is done by businesses uh, in the south with businesses in Britain. 60% of produce sold from the north is sold to EU member states. 30% of milk produced in the north is processed in the south. Has England not learned that imposing an English solution on an Irish situation is doomed to failure? Does Nigel Farage represent us? 40% of farmers' produce in the south goes to Britain. What will added tariffs do to working farming families? EU peace funding helps some of the most marginalised in our society into employment, improves connectivity, assists carers. I don't think we are going to get a replacement of those funds from the British Chancellor. The scary, thing is, the scary thing in all of this is the British never planned for this. They are flying blind, and that's very dangerous. This is from the representative from the Dundalk Chamber. We don't want to see Newry boom and bust. We don't want to see Dundalk boom and bust. We want to see both of them grow and prosper together. This is going to put small businesses along the border out of business. It's as simple as that. This, Brexit, is four square head on a challenge to the future well-being of us all. With the Good Friday Agreement, the British and Unionists have constitutionally recognised that the North is not like Norfolk or Devon. This Brexit will be a crisis that is at risk of reversing all the progress we have made here. As everyone knows, regardless of the common travel area here in the past, the border was hard. What broke that was joint membership of the EU and the advance of our uh, peace process. How do the proponents of Brexit think it will help employment regeneration and welfare in this region? Anyone concerned about the future economic welfare of this island should be worried. And one of the things that struck me, uh, Minister, was the contribution of one uh, business leader who, says that, who highlighted the hypocrisy um, of Brexiteers when they tell us there will be no return to a border of the past when they made the whole raison d'etre of their Brexit campaign about borders. It's exactly uh, what they've done. And of course, the last one uh, contribution, Minister, that I finish up with is let me find it. The community along the border have been quiet on this issue for too long, but that's the end of that. So here you have a mobilised, organised, energised, and above all, concerned broad range uh, of society, both north and south, who are making it very, very clear that the economic, social, uh, 
uh, issues and implications of this are massive and tangible and indeed, back to the original point, live, current uh, and ongoing uh, at the minute. So I think when we talk about messages going from this House Minister, I think the fund, and there are many messages that, that, that rightly have been advocated on the floor of this chamber and rightfully should go from this chamber, but I think the salient point, the most important message with any negotiation indeed, and uh, Potty McLaughlin uh, made clear the uh, benefit uh, and indeed the very worthwhile merit in studying and exploring the Kurt Hubner uh, report into Irish unification. There has been other issues you've mentioned in your report or your contribution sorry, uh, around Inter-Trade Ireland. It would be useful, Minister, maybe if you could expand slightly on what you see as Inter-Trade Ireland's role going forward as opposed to just saying it will have an important one. That goes without saying. Well, but conclude, I will conclude with this, Cahirlach. Uh, in terms of messaging, uh, in terms of stances, and in terms of mandates going forward, I think the most important one that we should all take with us when we move forward is that 56, a majority of people, 56%, uh, a majority of people in the north voted to remain. That should be our stance. That should be the stance of this government. Thank you, Senator.